Hello and welcome to the first Northampton Herald and Post sports podcast. I'm Dan Palmer, I'm here with uh, Carl Field, the sports journalist at the Northampton HMP. Uh, we're going to be discussing the sporting scene in the area, Cobblers, Saints, Steelbacks. Uh, I thought we'd kick off with uh, the Cobblers and not looking too good down at six fields at the moment. It's only uh, a few uh, few weeks really um, since that Wembley final uh, back in May. So not not too long, uh, just 90 minutes away from League One then. We're now in the bottom two of League Two. Um, what's been going on? Why, why, why is it not started well down there? Well, it's, it certainly feels like a few weeks down, but it's probably... A few months now, actually. Um, months, weeks, in, so in, 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 in real terms. Uh, it obviously it does, uh, but in, 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 like I say, in, in, when you look at it, it was only, uh, you know, it was only <coughs> nine games ago, really. Um, yeah. But uh, they're coming to the season and, and lost six of their first nine, um, and only won once in that nine, um, which is which is really uh, which is really taken a lot of people by surprise because Cobbers obviously tipped to, to be up there again this season, um, and um, you know it just hasn't happened for them so far. I was at Wembley for that, for that final. It was absolutely shocking. 45 minutes in the first half, which uh, cost them really. But everyone was saying after the game, um, we can use this to kick on next season. Um, so obviously, the season before that, they were in a relegation battle and they might have gone into the conference. Um, they turned that around, and um, I think everyone was hoping for another promotion challenge. Um, it just hasn't hasn't happened, does it? And um, you know, there's still time to time to turn it around. I guess one of the big problems at the moment is perhaps the the lack of goals, and that's uh, come to the yeah, spot right now. I think there's a couple of points there. Obviously, um, I mean, some some people have maybe suggested that it's a uh, you know a hangover from that from that Wembley final. Um, <laughs> you know, it's I suppose you, you can make arguments for both. Um, you know, I mean, they, they haven't started the season well, and, and obviously, you know, it's it, it does happen that the sides who, who lose in playoff finals and, and even semi-finals do struggle the season after, particularly early on, and, and that, that has happened, but. I mean, obviously, you've got to remember, there's a lot of there's a lot of new players in in the team this this season, mm. um, from, and obviously the, the key thing is he's he's tried to, you know, the AD Griffith, the manager, has tried to, to really sort of change the style of play, um, from the you know North, Northampton um, to last season and probably the season before, you know, um, <clears throat> you know, very very much a, a direct direct style of play. Um, Lump it up, lump it up to the front man, and obviously yeah, back in yeah. was a back in people attacking Femmes have moved on. Um, he's tried to play in a more fluid style of football through the middle, um, bringing in players like Darren Carter, Ian Morris, Gary Deegan. You know, he's trying to he's trying to play football, um, and and I think it does I think it does take time. Um, it does take time to, uh, to, to, to for, for it to work and for everything to gel together. I don't think it, I don't think it's um, gelled as quite quickly as, as people would like. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, you mentioned the. You, know, you mentioned the goals, and that, and that is a that is a massive, massive, massive issue. Um, you know, they're they're, 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 not, they're not scoring enough goals. Um, now we've lost uh, we've lost Jacob Blythe as well. He's uh, yeah, you Jacob uh, Jacob, a uh, uh, twenty-one year old um, uh, striker on loan from from Leicester. Um, He'd been sort of quite prolific in non-league before before he, before he came on board, uh, and he he was sort of his top scorer. Uh, scored three goals uh, since coming in, and you know he's you know I'll be uh, sort of below that. There hasn't really been a lot else. I mean, Donovan's got a couple. Um, you know, Platt's got one, and you know, and other than and I think Gary Deegan scored one, but other than that, there hasn't been any any goals at all uh, from from anywhere. And obviously, I think mean, part of the problem is that I mean, if you look if you look at their, if you look at their, if you look at their defeats, um, uh, particularly at home, and they've, they've won one. Uh, drawn to and lost to, and those those two defeats um, against Torquay and Exeter. I mean, they, they shouldn't have lost those games. I mean, no, they, no. They they were they were you know, I mean, they they battered both both teams, and they they should have been out of sight. I won the up for a Jacob Blythe goal both times, and should have been out of sight before they uh, before they lost those, those games. And I think I think for me that's the, that's the, that's the key thing. That's the worry that you know if they are short in any area, it's a, it's a it's a real it's a you know, it's it's a it's a recognised goal scorer because, in my opinion, I don't think that you know as good as good a players as Roy O'Donovan and Clive Platt are. I don't think they're the sort of players that are going to get you 20, 25, and 30 goals in a season, um, which is really what you, what you need. Um, and that, and that's why they're, they're I mean they they are short. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mentioned to a couple of fans about Blythe uh, when I heard the news, and um, you know his reaction is not really broadcastable on a, a family uh, family podcast uh, such as this one. But that's um, that's how critical it is really at the moment. Um, and like like you say, I think um, at this level, especially, you need that prolific marksman to get 20 goals to to fire him into the the league. And um, it must be annoying for Cobblers fans to see how well Bradford has started in League One. This just Gone in different directions, really. They've taken to a high level, like a like a doctor water, and uh, cobblers are, are going in the other direction. Um, so yeah, tough times for for Booth Freud. I think it's going to. Yeah, I mean, I, it's I mean, uh, particularly after the the the, 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 man, the defeat at Mansfield. Um, um, I, I, I myself, after the game, um, because and, I mean, Eddie Bruford was obviously visibly quite angry after that. Um, you know, he didn't, he didn't, he wasn't backwards and coming forwards in telling us how angry he was. I mean, he had, he had the players in at seven o'clock the following morning. I'm sure they yeah. were appreciative for that. Um, <clears throat> but um, he, uh, the, the, I put, I put, sort of question out on Twitter after that, and I just sort of basically just sort of saying, you know, trying to get a, sort of, trying to get a, sort of a feel of the opinion and. Is AD Briefway still the still the white manager for Northampton Town? Mm. And sort of seventy five percent of the, the the replies that I got were were, were in support of AD Briefway. Um, you know, I mean, I've got, got a few of them here. Um, I mean, they, they spot quite spot on when people sort of saying, you know, we, we can't be in the, the cycle of sort of continually sacking managers at the first sign of trouble. You got absolutely you've got, to stick with, no. you've got to stick with managers, and yeah, well, he's the white man, but we just need confidence in a goal scorer. Um, you know, you got you got people sort of saying, you know, there's lots of players letting them down at the moment, but you know, the buck only stops with him. Um, and then, but then, yeah, you got you got some other ones that, that perhaps aren't supportive. Um, you know, particularly over his, his, his sort of you know lack of signings um, uh, in certain areas. But in, in my view, is that that's that's not. You know, I don't think it's for that for a lack of trying. Mm. Uh, you know, he's not like he sort of sat there and said, you know, not 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 four players in. I think he's he's wanted to. It's just he's 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 got his. It, to a certain extent, he's got his hands tied behind his back because, of, like, like a lot of clubs in League Two, um, and even you know higher, the, 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 there's just no money, so yeah. he's having to work within very, very tight budgets. And um, you know, but I, I certainly don't think um, mm. uh, I, I'm, I, I don't think getting um, you know I don't think sacking Andy Bruford at this stage would would do anything at all for Northampton Town. In fact, I think it would only make the situation worse. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, you can't really build anything on, on shifting sands. Um, but, you know, f- football fans are pa- famously impatient, aren't they? Like, yeah. The results don't start coming. I mean, I mean, I think a lot of the Cobblers fans, I mean, they should, I mean, you know, they, they, they'll probably, they, a lot of them, they probably do, but they should probably remember where, where they were when, when Andy Bruford came in. I mean, they were, they were, I mean, they under the, the last knock into the Gary Johnson reign, they, they really were in dire straits. I mean, coming off the back of a 7-2 defeat to Shrewsbury and losing 4-1 at Plymouth, and yeah. you know, they, 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 I think they, they would have, they were going down. And Buford came in and, and turned it round. Um, and obviously, last season got them into the playoffs. Um, you know, I mean, arguably they, they could, they, they could, they were contenders at one point for automatic promotion, but it didn't happen. Um, and I, and I, you know, I think he, he is the, he is the right man, and I think. I think the chairman particularly has, has taken a, in the past. David Cardozo has, has taken a, a massive hit on the managers. He, he's taken, he's, you know, he's. I think he's invested a lot in Eddie Bruford, and I think sacking him now, bringing another manager in, and paying him off, and letting a new manager bring in his own players. I, just, I, just, I don't think there's a money there to do it anyway. Um, and I, don't, I don't think it would be the right move. I mean, it, it, even in his program notes on Saturday, uh, David Cardozo sort of was in his program notes. He was sort of very much sort of pointing his finger at the players as well. You know, sort of saying, you know. Yes, the, yeah. You know, there's players who are earning good money, um, uh, you know, more than they would do at some other clubs at this level. And they need to justify themselves with their performances, and I think that's, I think the players should, should probably read that and sort of take a note, really. Mm. Yeah, I, I know. Um, I saw AD after the nil-nil draw with Morecambe. He spoke a lot about keeping a clean sheet and how that was a positive step forward. Not sure if he's clutching at straws a, a bit there, but um, it, little steps forward, I suppose. And uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, it's, it's, yeah, the clean, the clean sheet was, you know, what was. Um, was was needed, um, um, but in, in my view, as, as I said to you earlier, Dan, um, you know, there, there's been time. I, I still, I still actually think that it's not, you're not, it's not quite as bad as, you know, it's, it's not quite as bad as, as, as it's been made out to be. Um, they are, they are going to give someone a good idea uh, very soon, particularly at six fields. Um, like I say, those, those those two defeats against Torquay and Exeter uh, should have been the Cobblers' wins. There's another six points. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that all that already takes you up to eleven points. Uh, and then, the, you know, obviously they're away from home. Obviously they've had a lot of well, okay, they're, they're four defeats and they haven't scored. But they, I mean, they've had a they've had a man, they've had a man set off in, you know, in, I think three out of their four yeah, league games, five five. You know, and you know, a couple of those have been, you know, perhaps 
unfortunate, and you know. But it's, um, I, I, you know, I think it's a matter of time. But the, but the key thing for me from this is, I think they, they, they I mean, they brought in obviously Paul Reed, uh, and uh, to back to the club in, in defence. Uh, Got standing ovation as well. Yeah, I mean that's a massive sign for them. They're massively, massively missing Kelvin Langreed still. I mean, they, you can make excuses about not all clubs have got injuries, but you know, he, I mean, he's, he's the captain, he's the centre half. I mean, he got he got eight goals last season. Yeah, I yeah. mean, from from the van, you, you, you know, you can't put can't put a price on that. Um, and you know, they need to start. They they, they need to start winning games. That and they need. I think they need contributions from from all over the pitch in terms of goals. But but more importantly, I think they need a. They need they need they need a recognised striker in there because they're creating lots of chances and and, and not just not putting them away. Um, and and I, you know I think I think once they I think AD AD Bruce said this week that he's he's looking sort of in the, especially particularly with injury uh, injury to to Jacob. Yeah. Uh, Clive Platt's now picked up a fine injury as well. So right. only with these were Donovan. You've got sort of um, JJ Hooper and hmm. you know and Ivan Tony, but they're they're very, they're very young and um, I think AD Bruce is looking sort of towards the the you know the out of contract market and the loan market so you can bring in but it's say he's I suppose, I think he's 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 constrained by by mm. budgets. So. I think um, another another player they're missing is uh, Luke Guttridge who, uh, who left the club to join Luton in the summer. He actually dropped down the league and he's um, he's doing really well down there. And I mean it's not gonna they need some wins quickly and if they do get two or three wins and we won't be talking like this anymore. Will no, we? I, I don't think so. Uh, but it's it's just you mentioned that because um, you know. On, on the on the subject of like Luke Guttridge and and, and even um, yeah, Luke Guttridge, he, he was offered a he was offered he was offered a deal um, uh, by by the club stay in the summer. But I think AD has, has said that he's you know he, he would like to have kept him, but now he's he's actually quite pleased with the players he's got now. He thinks he's got a better squad this year. Yeah, that's an interesting comment. Uh, even even, yeah. even Ben Harding, yeah. who went to Torquay, and they obviously they, mm. they brought in um, Ian Morris from from Torquay and. They brought in obviously, you know, Darren Carter and Gary Deegan, who players who knows well. And you know, I think I think I, I, you've asked that question. You know, are they missing Luke Guttridge? Are they missing Ben Harding? But he, he's he's quite adamant that they aren't. And, and it's just a matter of time, and it, and it will turn. And and he, he's confident that when it does, they'll they'll be they'll be winning. You know, three, four, five games on the spin, putting an unbeaten one together. And I, I actually still I do still I am still of the opinion that they they will be up there at the end of the season. Managed to be seen. So yeah. Um. Well, we should uh, move on now, but um, some tough games for the Cobblers, um, starting with AFC Wimbledon on Saturday, who uh, have almost done the opposite to Northampton. They uh, only just stayed up last season, but they're in a playoff spot at the moment. Um, and Oxford coming up as well, so yeah, another I mean, tough game. Two tough games, um, but I think, I think I, I mean, I'm probably quite an Eddie Booth when I say this, but I think I agree with them when they say he says they, they, do, they do just need a, you know, a scrappy, ugly one to win off someone's backside. Uh, yeah, because I think if they once they get that, particularly away from home, because it's been shocking before. But um, they, if they, once they get that, I think it will be only a matter of time before they before they start winning games. Fantastic. Let's move on to the uh, the. Rock- Being um, the Saints uh, second in the Premiership at the moment, and they're off to uh, Leicester Tigers um, at the weekend. Um, that's obviously a repeat of the uh, highly charged, uh, controversial Premiership final between the. Uh, between the two, um, no, it's going to be an interesting, interesting game. That one, a couple of players out for Leicester. And yes, um, uh, they've got. Um, you know, obviously, they are missing a couple of players. Um, but I mean, they're, they're missing Manny Chalangri and, and, and Tom Croft. Mm. Um, I mean, it was interesting. I put that to, to Jim Manager yesterday at the press conference, and he, and he, and he was, he, he was, he was, um, he sort of dismissed it really as, as a problem. He, you know, he sort of probably. Right to point out that Leicester got a massive squad of, of massively talented international players, um, and I think it. I mean, his, his view that he, you take one out and you take one out, and the one who comes in will be, you know, will be just as good. Uh, it won't affect the team. And, you know, it remains to be seen whether they will miss those players. Mm. But they've had, they've had a fantastic start, and obviously, you know, it's Leicester, and it's and that that in itself is, you know, it makes it um, makes it a you know, very fasc- a fascinating picture. Mm. Now, it's a long time since. Um Saints have got a win up there. Two thousand and seven. Two thousand and seven is yeah. actually obviously before before Jim Manager's time. Yeah, uh, yeah. it's actually uh, Jim Manager came in in two thousand and seven. Um, it, it was before his time, so he's he's looking for his first league win up there. Um, you know, and, and I think um, and I think it'd be it'd be it'd be mad. if they were if they were to get the win, uh, if they were to get one up there, I think it would be massive psychologically going forward. Mm. Um, um, but then at the same time, as as Jim has rightly pointed out, I think if they do if they do lose up there, then I think it. it, it you know, it won't define the season. Yeah, I wonder what Malander's thinking. Obviously, the the final um, 
dominated by Dylan Hartley's uh, red cards. Um, he must be he must be wondering what might have been if we had stayed at full strength for that game. Um, I think he I think he might be hurting a bit, and I think he I think he'll be determined to to get some sort of recompense uh, on Saturday. So that that should be a, should be an interesting factor. Um, so Saints have also they've uh, added Corby Sierra, Alex Corby Sierra, and uh, George North over the summer too. Two players who starred for the British and Irish Lions. Um, yeah. How they've been getting on? How they? No, no, no the it's, uh, it's yeah, it's, it's, it's obviously all the all the talk was was over the summer was about who Saints are brought in in terms of Corby Sierra North. But mm. you know, ironically, the the, 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 the standout players so far haven't been those players. I mean, they've they played well, um, mm. but I mean, it's it's more the sort of likes of sort of Sam Dickinson. Um, it's number eight. He he you know, he he was signed from um, from Rotherham over a year ago now, um, and he and he sort of he broke his arm quite early on, and yeah, he, yeah. he missed uh, he missed the majority of last season. Um, came back, we were in his first season, so he came back uh, for Wanderers game, another spell at Mosley in the Championship, and he's really come back in pre-season. He's really you know put his hand up, and his performance, particularly against uh, Exeter on on the opening day, and then the other night you know against Sale. I mean, it was it was it was a colossal, you know, yeah. and it was, and uh, and you know, players like like Dick and even even sort of, um, you know, uh, Lee Dixon at number nine, um, he, he's re he's really stuck his end. I mean, obviously, Saints have brought in obviously Khan for to leave from from Ospreys over the summer to to challenge Lee for that number nine shirt, and and, and if anything, Lee Lee Dixon has, has actually had a positive impact on his performances because he's really stuck his end up and um, and. Um, you know, and responded. I mean, George North obviously getting his his uh, his first try. You know, against Sale. I think that probably gets the month. Yeah, a little bit. I think everyone was waiting for that, weren't they? The, the first North moment, if you like. But, I mean, yeah, he's he's it's funny because he's obviously in in the, in the games previously he's had a couple of those those sort of barnstorming runs of his. I remember the, hmm. the game where they lost the game they lost against Gloucester. Um, you know, it was, it was sort of his 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 sort of run from his own half that that. Ended up setting up the try for Jamie Elliott and the stoppage time. Yeah. They should have won, and obviously they were yeah. uh, outdone by really twelve trees of late penalty. But and obviously a run run against Harlequins as well, um, was, and ended up sort of was it sort of preluded the the try for um, yeah, you know, in that in that game as well. Uh, so so yeah, he's done well as well, and I think it may be about time before he's. You know, sort of helping himself to a glove try. Yeah, but well, it's a great story, isn't it, Dickinson? Like going away. Uh, and then he's come back. It's like a new signing for for Jim, and um, yeah, I mean, he's taking his said, yeah. taking his opportunity with both fans. Yeah, yes, yeah. Um, so that, that's brilliant to see. Um, you know, I mean, <clears throat> obviously there's the European campaign coming up as well with the game in France against Casper. Yeah, um, um, Saints. I mean, obviously, I mean, it's, it's it's quite a challenging period coming up now for Saints. Obviously, they've got the they've got the Leicester game Saturday, hmm. uh, and then obviously got Cash and Ospreys in the Ireland Cup, and then you're straight into Saracen. So it's and then after, and obviously they're new to the internationals and players obviously being released for those. And I think it was important for, for Saints to get off to a good start, and they have done. Um, and it's it's going to be interesting to see once we get into that sort of you know meaty part that we, we we start to find out you know what they're what they're made of as well. Yeah, I guess we'll have to watch this space on that one. Um, I actually disagree with uh, Jim Mallander. I think to Alagi and Crofts missing is a big blow for Leicester, two of their key players. But um, we'll see. Come Saturday at, at Welford Road. Um, but may maybe moving on to um, a team who's done very well, the uh, Northamptonshire County Cricket Club, the Steelbacks. I mean, last season the county championship, two wins, finished second bottom in the T20 competition. They won just one game. This season they've won the T20 and they've been promoted from Division Two of the county championship. It's unbelievable. No, they've had an absolute, they absolutely unbelievable season. Um, it couldn't have gone any, couldn't have gone any better. Uh, I don't think. Um, you know, obviously get getting promotion up to. Division one for the first time since 2004. Um, winning the T20s. I mean, I, I don't think anyone would have anyone have even even not even getting to finals day. I don't think. Yeah, I, I don't think even the, the, the most hardened, most you know, Steelbacks fan would have, would have put a bet on that at the start of the season. I mean, they, they really have. Um, they, they, they really have had a great season, um, and it'd be interesting to see how they can how they can carry on. I think David David Ripley's um, you know, since taking over his coach, really sort of galvanised the whole club. Um, yeah, I think Alex Wakeley said as much. Captain in, in T20 said as much in, in after the T20 that he's really had a positive impact on everyone at the club, and it, there's a real feel good factor around the club now. And they've got a lot of, um, they've got a lot, of, they've got a good young squad, and obviously players like David Willey's had a, you know, he's, he's been outstanding this yeah. season. Uh, obviously Alex Wakeley, and you know, and they're um, yeah, they're, they're only going to go from strength to strength. Well, Ripley's been phenomenal. Um, I remember 
speaking to and reading um, about some of his methods before the start of the season and he was he was doing things like getting a team to play Sabutio cricket to work on their fielding and all sorts of stuff but whatever he's done has worked because um, when you have a season like they did two years ago at the bottom basically of both leagues you expect maybe mid-table-ish just winning a few more games as improvement but to go on again and actually win the win the silverware Edgbaston and yeah I mean, I, 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 awesome. David Willey was Sorry, not David. David Ripley. Um, he said, um, you know, quite even prior to the prior to finals day, that they 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 had the dream themselves of getting to that far. I mean, they, they said that their, their targets this year obviously were they, the main target was getting promotion, so they've achieved that. Uh, but just 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 a basic improvement in the white ball cricket, which is that I mean they've done that. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, well, it's, it's amazing that they've done it in a four day a four day format and a twenty over format. So it's like chalk and cheese, isn't it? And they've excelled with. The long format of the game and the and the, the shorter format as well. Um, I think that David Willey, uh, someone we've mentioned, did his performance particularly in the T20 final was just absolutely majestic. Um, bat ball in the field. Um, he's just signed a new contract, hasn't he, as well? So yeah, I mean that, that's, that, that's, that's, the, that's probably the, the, the biggest. Um, I, think, I think the the, the biggest um, crew so far is that him, him signing a new four-year contract and keeping him there um, because I, it, you know if, if he's if that bloke isn't playing international cricket, particularly at one day level in in, in the three years' time, I'll be I'll be shot, I'll be stunned. Mm. Um, you know, his his performance in the in the T Twenty final against Shari was probably the best T Twenty performance I've ever seen. Like, um, obviously taking a hat trick to win it. I mean, yeah. you know, scoring up and hot, I think it was like fifty off nineteen balls and sixty off twenty seven before he got out, and you know, a couple of catches and run out. It was it was yeah. it was unbelievable. It was it really was. Um, you know, I think then he, then he took it on into the. You know, he's he's, he's been he's been sort of consistently good in in the, in the four day game as well. Obviously, he's been called up to play for the Lions, um, and he's he's been going from strength to strength there. He's he's, he's caught the eye of the selectors, um, and you know, he's just been he's been terrific um, all season really. So, well, thanks very much, Carl. I think I'm um, going to wrap it up there. Um, if you'd like to follow us on Twitter, we're at North Hans Sports, and I think you've got your owner. Your owner yes, uh, Twitter Carl, Carl Field underscore. And you can also um, so log on to the web. Follow, uh, and yeah, yeah, give them a follow. Yeah. 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 Uh, just uh, also like to mention our um, our, our new. Uh, oh yeah, that's our, right. Our, yeah. New, yeah. our new web. Uh, our, new, our new thing we've got on the web now. We've got um, we're doing we're in partnership with uh, with, uh, with the Northampton Town Football Club and uh, Northampton Aldi. Uh, we are running the voting for the Northampton Aldi Play of the Month competition uh, each and every month. Um, so you know if you if you fancy winning you know a couple of couple of tickets to a cobbler's game. Uh, I think I think Aldi are doing a running a prize as well that you win or something. Teddy bear, uh, isn't it? Aldi bear, yes, of course, yeah. quite a nice prize as well. So yeah. uh, if you go if you fancy going on and winning winning one of those, go on to our, on to our website now. Um, and you can actually vote now for, for September's player of the month. Hmm. Obviously uh, you know there's uh, it's been a tough month for the cobblers but I'm sure there's a couple of players that stood out, um Jacob Bide particularly. Um so you go on and vote and um, yeah you'll be you could you could win so mm. yeah that the website uh, Northampton hyphen news hyphen hp dot co dot uk. Um thanks for listening and we will see you again soon. Cheers now. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Bye.